Ghost of Yote. Rip. You know it's true. We have another humiliation happening in video games as PlayStation just unveiled that it's available to wishlist Ghost of Yotai. This is another game that Sucker Punch might want to delay for a year. Uh, we've seen a lot of problems lately, and uh, gosh, this type of thing is upsetting gamers as the characters they love are getting replaced with diversity, equity, and inclusivity. Yeah, this game... The marketing, the everything surrounding this has so many red flags around it, it's insane. Now, I personally don't care if you're playing a woman, because I typically always choose to play a woman, because hot, duh, why would I not, effectively? But, despite that, everything else is truly a red flag. The developers, what has been said, the actors, the voice actors, the things that the developers are doing... Oh my god, there's no way this is going to succeed. People can smell that this is a Vogue DUI infested pile of dung miles away. And, well, people have gotten pretty smart about this type of stuff. And, well, from incels to no money cells. That's, that's what this is turning to be, in. well, for the companies at least. And that's a good thing. We should and need to punish bad behavior. And this is some of the worst behavior that no one wants. They should respect the consumers, aka us, not try to do some completely brain-damaged political pandering that no one literally cares about, okay? Do that at your own free time, okay? I don't care how many rainbow marches you participate in. Participate in. Well, actually, I do care, and I hope it's zero. But still. At least don't put it in the games, un unless you don't want anyone to buy them, and then flop. I don't know what's wrong with PlayStation. They won the console wars. Xbox literally gave up, and they were still, hold my beer, buddy, I can't let you go down alone. Well, not that consoles matter, because consoles are shit in general, but you get the point. As always, and we're going to get into this in just a moment, and the reaction that fans had... Uh, from the Ghost of Tsushima original game, not good for PlayStation in just a moment. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Join us here as we talk about all things in the culture, especially science fiction and fantasy. My name is John Delarose, and I am a science fiction author and a comic creator. This is my newsletter sign up, which is great channel, but the newsletter sign up and intro is 20 seconds too long, buddy. Please. So much for uh, just making everything a success so far. But he has you guys are the shit. modern audiences That's that true. I'm looking for. Uh, not quite the modern audiences that PlayStation's looking for. <laughs> so this is what they posted today. Ghost of Yotai, the next adventure from Sucker Punch Productions, is available to wishlist today. And then they have a link, of course, uh, which you can load and then check it out on the PlayStation Store. Here it is, the announcement, and it's going to release in 2025, as they say. Now, this game got savaged about a month ago when people started noticing differences from this game is still being savaged. There's not anyone talking positively about this. Ghost of Tsushima. And like normal, like in every sort of thing, it got replaced with a strong female lead. And uh, and since they replaced the character in that front, people started going, hmm, this doesn't look good. Now, it actually caused division. If this was a Blizzard game, she would be at least half black and have an amputated arm. Don't know what's wrong with Blizzard and cutting uh, women's arms off, but they're doing it to pretty much everything. ...among gamers, because some were like, look, uh, this is just a, if this is a side story, if it's a different story or whatever, we don't care that much. Uh, you know, I mean, this might be good. The original game was good. Uh, and then people started looking into the production. And sure enough, Sucker Punch Productions had a bunch of DEI stuff all over their uh, their little website and all the other things that they do. It looks like the design team and the devs that were Sad. the original Ghost of Tsushima people were not involved in this. And then it was replaced by also a mostly female team. Now, Yeah, oh, oh, is he going to show? There was, there was a great picture of... There, there's so many actually great pictures. You have the first installment of a game, literally only men on the team, because obviously... Then you have the second DEI Vogue garbage pile iteration that sells zero copies and bankrupts the company. All women. All women and one dude with negative 50 testosterone levels. It's great. It's great. 
Now, Sony, of course, uh, put that they wanted DEI initiatives into everything as well. So this has a uh, sort of hmm, perfect storm, I guess, of just uh, crappiness uh, looking like it's going to be coming out of the series, much like we saw with the Assassin's Creed Shadows, where Ubisoft just decided to take a Japanese samurai situation and turn it into a black gay samurai. Uh, sort of. Love it. I, I, I love it. Uh, Ubisoft cannot die fast. Honestly, the Black Lives Matter uh, infused nonsense, which is destroying that entire company as we speak, Good. is uh, a complete disaster over there. So this looks like much the same. And then, of course, the final uh, death knell uh, for the game is the voice actress that they chose is some absolute radical activist who is. She's literally insane. OK, she she is a diversity hire through and through. She is a Vogue activist, probably from birth, okay? It was written in the stars above that she will t she will create great, disastrous change in the world. And my God, she's doing it. It's absolutely crazy and uh, just uh, hates everything that gamers stand for in general. And uh, once that came out, it looks like this game is going to be in big, big trouble. Now, uh, as PlayStation revealed this, uh, they got savaged in the comments. And they know that they're going to have trouble on their hands as the gamers are rising up once again against a replacement character in one of their beloved franchises. So, as you get into things, I'll wait for reviews. Would rather her be an assassin than a samurai? Because she's yeah, another female samurai. We'll see. Uh, just pass immediately. No commie activist deserves an income. Oh my! And placing the article from that park place where it was. Un oh, that picture, bro. That picture. Holy shit! Pictures really do say more than a thousand words, don't they? Veiled that this Erika Ishi uh, is crazy and thinks that police are white supremacists and is a big supporter of the trans stuff. I too. I I mean, if I looked like her, I would also do it. But as I say this, I am fully well, well aware that she actually has, like, two really hot pictures out online. Now, don't try to find them because it's honestly not worth it. I came across them and I was making a thumbnail for a different video. Uh, but yeah, turns out, it, well, anyone can look decent in the right angle. But don't try to search it. You're, there's going to be a lot more disappointment than actually like, oh, wow, she's not actually disgusting in all ways. Only most. Not worth it, boys. Identify as non-binary? Oh, that's excellent. I love that. Uh, that is oh, yeah, this is the new thing. People are commenting this a lot. <laughs> I'm non-binary. <laughs> yeah, people have been commenting this in the past couple of days. I, I'm not binary and whatnot. There's also a different one. I forgot which one it is, but yeah. The quality where I'm going to hit like on this one. Uh, and how about no? Uh, given the cultural climate, the fact that you've decided to choose an unattractive female lead, I'm in wait and see mode. You had a sale. Guaranteed sale, in fact. When this controversy first started about Ghost of Yote, I did not look into it. I just saw the... Uh, I didn't see the actual voice actress. Uh, actress. I just saw the uh, character, the woman that's you know you're be gonna be playing as, and I was like, "Well, this does not look that bad. Pretty normal. No, all accounts normal. Not your typical DEI garbage when she has five chins. So, not really that bad." Oh man, how wrong I was to think for a moment that that's not gonna be, you know, the beginning of the end in this case, okay? Either you're still at Blade Hot, or it's 100% just a DEI garbage pile. It is what it is. This is this is a real customer, guys, for real, that they're losing, and uh, hopefully they listen. Uh, no. I had a platinum trophy for the first game, couldn't wait for the second, now I'm not sure. Here's how you can make sure I never buy a sequel. Gaslight me, insinuate my eyes don't work, that she's incredibly attractive, and I'm just a sexist. Gaslight me. Yeah, she's not incredibly attractive. She's just okay. That's the thing. She's she's kind of average-ish. And I'm not talking average-ish as your uh, hot cashier at your local gas station. She's below that. Insinuate I'm a potential customer is sexist or racist or phobic for simply noticing your design choice. It's not likely you'll be able to salvage this one, honestly. I can't imagine how you... She's more like the convenience store cashier that just hit 30 and you can tell that she thought that she's going to achieve great things in life, but now she's kind of hitting the ball rapidly and 
Her best days are over. Win me over between now and release. Stay away from gaslighting. Focus on why the game looks fun. This is something that like is just very. And the guy's like, look, I'm rooting. This, he's like, I'm rooting for you guys. I I love Ghost of Tsushima. And you guys just need to focus on why the game's fun, why this is something that I actually want to play as a fan of the game. And uh, it's it's amazing that these companies never end up doing this. <laughs> it's like he knows exactly what the marketing play is going to be in advance. They're going to start shrieking about gamers and the like because this is what always happens. It's really, really sad when these SJWs get involved. I recommend heavily avoiding marketing the female lead as inherently great. I didn't buy the first game because I got to play as a man, so I won't be buying the second one because I get to play as a woman. Maybe if you essentially beg gamers to buy this game, maybe I'll decide to pick it up. However, this playing dumb about your own creative choices or gaslighting material, uh, potential customers as sexist is not a sales driver. It's a franchise destroyer. Good luck. You need it. One That's actually... Dude, this guy actually cares. Too bad they don't care to listen. Unresentful uh, former customer. And by the way, by the way, the moment I saw these flags right here, I knew that the response is going to be just vile poison. And there we, there we go. Do not, do the world, uh, do the world, do the world s favor and don't reproduce. Did you expect honestly anything else? Full, uh, former customer. So uh, that's a that is a big big uh, 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 <laughs> deal there, and this is the type of person that you would think these companies would want to listen to. And we've seen some smaller studios actually like do this sort of thing. We've seen over the last uh, couple of weeks, we saw Moon Studios and uh, their dev over there and their CEO just talking about how they want to focus on gameplay and things like that. And it looks like the guy's a liberal. I mean, it, it does uh, based on some of the stuff that he said. But he also understands that his job's like in entertainment. This is an entertainment industry, and you're supposed to provide players what they want. Now, when a sequel to a game that's very popular, you typically go out and you you take the characters that people love and, uh, and of course, uh, just make a sequel with a story. We've seen that Dragon Age... The By the way, some people at this stage probably think that, hey, not buying a game because hot pass because the lead role is an insufficient activist is a bit too far. And I understand that, but that is a sadly the wrong attitude to have here, okay? If they are willing to literally get someone to work for them who hates everything that you should stand for, that is a very, very, very harsh statement about what you actually want to achieve, how you want to do things and whatnot. So, sometimes you can separate art from the artist, Sometimes you can't. And in gaming, I think we shouldn't separate these things at all. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna hire someone like this, that just tells me that you, the company who made this choice, care probably about that more than actual the people that you are trying to sell the game to. So I think not buying this game just purely based on the idea that uh the lead role is an insufferable activist is a 150% good idea. The Veil Guard is doing the opposite of that. They're taking the characters that they love and downplaying them in the new edition of it because they want to make it their own. And this reeks of very similar story choices right here. When you see the design team who's completely different uh, and, of course, uh, completely female, it looks like somebody who wants to, like, make their own. But actually, let me check that. Was it that tweet? Ghost of your day dev team images. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is all females, and we actually did uh, would or pass on the on this dev team, and like only two of them got the pass. Everything else was burned with fire. So yeah, one more bad thing game and is just kind of using the franchise rather than actually somebody who's actually trying to continue a franchise and create something off of the glory of the first game and that's the problem everybody's so egotistical in these spaces at this point that they have to like leave their mark on everything they have to make it their own choices own voices right and uh and that's what we're seeing across the board here and this is why gamers are frustrated because 
they're seeing that this is likely to be happening with this game already. Ghost of DEI tie. <laughs> Not buying this trash. That's funny. Hard pass because the lead role is an insufferable activist. This is DEI shite. Too woke. I'll pass. Next game, please. They did Jin dirty. Jin is the protagonist of the original one. And as you see, following the successful launch of Ghost of well, it's 300 years later. He's dead. What do you care? Yeah, that, that's probably going to be their response. Tsushima Sucker Punch greenlit a sequel two months after the game's release, once sales data confirmed its commercial success. While the main development team moved on to other projects, a smaller team remained focused on Ghost of Tsushima Legends multiplayer mode and downloadable content, which was included in PS5 game and PC versions of the game. Originally, Ghost of Tsushima 2 was intended to continue the story of Jin Sakai. However, Ghost of Yotai the heroine is a new character named Astu. Atsu, sorry. Has to. Has to, yeah. Uh, the report indicates that Sucker Punch utilized the assets they had initially created for the sequel to develop this project within the Ghost of Tsushima universe. So the new team of devs, mostly female, came in and decided they wanted a character to look like... Fully, fully, fully 100% female. Right, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just show it to you in case you are not of it. Uh... Let me switch the things. Yep. 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 Pretty cool, ain't it? Beautiful, in fact, one might even say. Honestly, amazing, even. Like us, rather than actually following up on the character that everybody loves. And of course, of course, their next marketing play is going to be to call gamers sexist, try to attack people on that level, and it never works well for them. Hell we yeah. know how this works. Uh, some well, they don't care about the fact that it doesn't work. We have seen it time and time again. The same old playbook being used, and guess what? Not a single time it gets any results. How many times have you seen uh, a game that... is ridiculously woke, people are not buying it, it woke, and then developers are like, Bigot, racist, misogynist, incels. What now? And everyone's like, oh my god, I better buy this thing, otherwise I'm an incel. How many times has this worked out? None. None. In fact, it does the opposite. It makes things worse. And yet, they never change. Because it's not about money. It's about the politics. Something's going to come out. They're going to cry harassment just because gamers push back on this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, this is what happens every single time. And it's not uh, just the simple matter of just putting in a female character into the game, as we know. Uh, the the Zelda game, Echoes of Wisdom, well, I, I personally think that's a... Uh, there are plenty of games where there's a main female character to lead. But she's not even, by the way, Stellar Blade's level of jiggle physics and beautifulness and absolute wife material. And still, the games are awesome. But having a female lead doesn't mean that the game is going to be a disaster. It's a choice that uh, shouldn't have been made by Nintendo in this climate. Uh, it seems to be pretty fun, and everybody seems to be enjoying it. I will never make a non-male, a not-female character in the game, because I'm not gay. Your move. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, I, maybe I took the L on that one, guys, but is what it is. And, uh, of course, Stellar Blade uh, was something gamers enjoyed pretty well this year. So it is just like this look where it is pretty obviously DEI infested. This looks like a self-insert of that activist lady who is act. Well, it is definitely a self-insert, and it's not even by her. It's about, uh, it's from the people who made this. Again, this is why we can't. This is why we can't separate uh, the art from the artist sometimes. And in this case, it's all just a, a hodgepodge of well, this kind of stuff. Anyway, that's that's an absolute ten out of ten. Don Adele Arroz, ten out of ten. Have a nice day. Bye bye.